It's new and not a moment too soon from our guest, Mary Chapin Carpenter, from the things that we are made of. Good morning and welcome to Coffee Country and Cody. Good morning, and I have my coffee. Too. It is great to see yes. your smiling face. So, uh, <laughs> something tamed or something wild, something Mary tamed, Chapin? Wild. Which is it? Uh, it's both. <laughs> it is. It's about the two sides of yourself coexisting, if not always smoothly, but at least doing so. What else are there but the lessons in your heart? Mm -hmm. Something tamed, something wild. I love that line. Thank you. And the first verse and chorus of that. Thank you. And it's been how long since new music? Oh, gosh. The heart. uh, 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 Well, I put an orchestral record out Uh uh, two, three years ago, but those were existing songs. So I'm going to say, I'll probably get it wrong, but I'm going to say five years, maybe. Uh, on average, it's about three, but it's a little longer this time because I had that orchestral record between. <laughs> and the interesting thing this time, we just had him on Coffee Country and Cody and our evening of stars at the Country Music Hall of Fame, Dave Cobb. Oh, what a great Working guy. famously with him. He is the yeah. go-to guy in this town these days and uh, just finished this man. new Southern Family Project yes. that's... Cracker Barrel has an exclusive on it that comes complete with recipes, by the way. Uh, Is that true? <laughs> yes. I didn't they know that. have artist <laughs> recipes. Miranda Lambert's got meatloaf. Shooter Jennings has got sausage gravy, I think, and I don't know what the others are. And Dave's but. wife, Lydia, is one of the greatest cooks in the world. So She's that, Armenian? She's from Albania. Hey, oh, Albania. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's great. I didn't know it had that, that right. uh, component to it. So, uh, Dave Cobb, how long have you known him? Or was this a very recent introduction? A, rec- and- a recent introduction. Um, it, was a, it was about two years ago, and I was starting to think about uh, making a new record. I had been writing songs. I was still writing songs. And I, having had this wonderful experience with um, this orchestral record that I had put out, and... Th- really what that was about for me was sort of throwing myself in the deep end, doing something I had never done before, being terrified, but at the same time loving that that sort of terror, in, if we can do that. And I think we can, you know, just wanting to just get out of your comfort zone. Mm-hmm. And that experience made me want to turn a new page and just do something different, work with different people, the idea of just, learning something new is is just tantalizing to me uh it's it's a magnet so uh my publicist who i adore and trust so much said i think you should meet with dave cobb and i was familiar with him at that point for uh his work with jason isbell the first record that they had done together and that was all i knew um and so I was on tour, and I flew to Nashville for the day, and he just invited me to come over and hang out at his house. He's got a little studio there. So I did. Uh, we just sat around and talked about the artists that we grew up listening to. Um, he's, a, he's a comfortable conversationalist, isn't well, he? Well, and he's, he knows more about music than probably anybody I've ever met except for Eddie Stubbs. <laughs> You know, seriously. Which we're going to get the DC connection here in just a little bit. But Dave knows so much about so many different things. And uh, we bonded over the Beatles, over country music, over folk music, over things that we just grew up listening to. And I just had a really comfortable time talking to him. And that was it. I didn't play him any songs. I didn't, you know, we didn't talk about really, you know, ideas of what we would do. It was just more like, who do you like? And you know, what have you been up to kind of thing. And that that sense of ease was so appealing to me. And, uh, and, and I was just so thrilled that he wanted to work together. And so that's how it happened. It was very simple. A little bit ago we were talking off air about the last night within the last few hours, John Fogarty mm-hmm. has made his first ever appearance on the Grand Ole Opry as a guest of Brad Paisley because they're in the studio working on some That's stuff. That's terrific. So, so yeah. people or you, you, you working with Dave Cobb or Brad Paisley and John Fogarty working mm-hmm. together, this mm-hmm. town, do you feel it coming back here, not living here, living in Virginia, you come back here, do you feel something different that over the last five years and particularly in the last couple oh, yeah. of years has but burst there's loose? Tremendous energy. Um, I love the cross-pollination, if you will, of music and genres and eras. That's... Yeah. That to me is uh, respecting the past in order to create the future. I think that's wonderful. 
Mary Chapin Carpenter is here. New music, the things that we are made of. Coffee Country and Cody. So uh, you did a podcast with my sidekick, co-host, <laughs> producer to the stars, show booker to the stars, Charlie Matos yesterday. And how was it to, to find out, you referenced Daddy Stubbs a moment ago, mm-hmm. somebody mm-hmm. who you, off again, off air a moment ago said, actually, he knows stuff that I don't remember and I need him. Right. That He's is Charlie pers- Matos across the way over there. I need to hire him as my personal archivist. <laughs> uh, he he really he's you know he's a tremendous fan of music and uh, he I've been fortunate enough that he's followed me and and uh, he he and I had a ter- terrific conversation because he has a lot of anecdotes about performing, touring, recording, uh, other artists that I've worked with, and and he's seen it so. It was really fun. It was a. Tr- it was really, really fun. You've seen her more than anybody else in the whole wide world. Charlie. Yeah, as I told Mary Chapin yesterday, I'm one of those who keeps uh, ticket stubs, yeah. and I have the old magnetic photo album with the sticky cardboard and the little cellophane <laughs> that comes on top oh, of yeah. it. So the cardboard has yellowed all around. But By the, the way, you'll never get those still, out of there. No, 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 but the, the, the ticket <laughs> stubs still look good. So uh, it's easy to count, and I've seen Mary Chapin 12 times. I've seen <sighs> Tom Petty 11. However, you need to come to Nashville because I have tickets for Mud Crutch at the oh, Ryman, and that's Tom and Belmont yeah. and Mike Campbell. Right, so. Right. Right. So that great. that will even things. So I mean, well, we make sure you tell, <laughs> make sure you tell okay Eddie, okay. Eddie Stubbs you're going to see Mud Crutch. And just be, have a camera he, close by so I can see the reaction. He'll That's appreciate that. Yes. So what is it with the D.C. scene and Nashville? We think about people coming here from the South. We think about people coming from Oklahoma and Texas through the years and have made their mark. But you know, I think people. Uh, it depends on who you're talking to, obviously. Because this goes back to the Stonemans, doesn't but, it? When but, they have been the, the original folks that people came out of that area that people knew nationally. Well, I think that you know, again, it depends on who you talk to. Okay. It depends on what their reference points are. But I think Washington is considered a southern city, the way Baltimore is considered a southern city. Yeah. Uh, they're close together, but DC has had its 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 moments as. Well, for example, and we were talking about this yesterday, um, as the bluegrass capital of the world in the 70s, uh, before that as well. And, you know, and then in the like early 80s, you know, go-go music, all, a lot of things have, have sort of, you know, been around, but, but D.C. has had really wonderful and healthy sort of scenes. Every city has their own scene. You have to live there, I think, in order to be aware of them. But D.C., definitely with bluegrass. Um, and I moved there when – I moved to D.C. in 1974 with my family. And I was just, you know, a closet singer-songwriter. And by that I mean just I'd sit in my room and I'd play and I'd write and all this. And uh, I fell in love with bluegrass upon – discovering it in dc um you know it just so the connection is there and yeah. then we have we're lucky to have a, an incredible place called the birchmere which is known far and wide for its uh its stage and presenting world-class artists of really every genre but years ago the seldom seen had a you know thousand year residency every thursday night at the at the birchmere and and that i think in large part fueled uh its sense of being the bluegrass capital of the world and our um, great and friend, acoustic music so great friend to wsm and the grand Ole opry garrison keeler has helped too by taking prairie home companion there popularizing I, I, it every year absolutely a couple of times a year and some and and around the country as well yeah. uh but every year they come to wolf trap one of the beautiful outdoor venues and uh that's quite a celebration whenever Prairie Home comes. And I think about the Stolmans, I reference them, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Amy Lou Harris's connection yes. there, and yes. more recently Eric Brace, who has moved to Nashville and came out of that D.C. scene. Right, and, and Eric. The Whites and, and, and Amy Peter, Lou they, and all right, that. Right, right. They just, they just released an album that's a tribute to the Birchmere and all the artists that they saw there. So, wonderful. Mary Chapin Carpenter is here. The things that we are made of. We'll continue in just a moment of break. Things we're made of. Mary Chapin Carpenter, our guest this morning. New music, Map of My Hearts, which you just heard on 6.50 a.m. WSM. Around the world at WSMonline.com. The app download to your smartphone. Heartland Television. 
This is being, as uh, Charlie's podcast yesterday, this is being filmed as well that you will be able to see at WSMonline.com. When is your podcast going to be up, Charlie? You I will have that up uh, by about 5 a.m. tomorrow morning. Oh, my God. Yes. Well, and the thing what? Charlie and I talked about is your voice just is marvelous. It's still right there where it was, and that doesn't always happen to voices over the years. They change, but... I, I, feel, I, I think my voice has gotten lower. Lower. <laughs> Lower. Uh, I, I, I hear a little of that, but it's still so rich and full and wonderful. Well, and, thank you. And Dave Cobb certainly captured that as your producer and your guitar work, same sort of thing. Thank I, you. I, I felt and that. And thanks to Dave. Yeah. That's, that's lovely. Thanks. Are you overly critical when you listen back? Oh, Does it take God. you a long time to? Oh, I'm, I'm the worst. I'm just <laughs> impossible. And, and uh, you know, I'm lucky to work with people who have infinite patience. Really. Um, but I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I deconstruct things and pick them apart and say, I cannot live with this. Let's do it again. <laughs> 13,000 times. And that's, oh, that was, a, so this is what was really different for me working with Dave. That's the way I usually am. And he was so adamant about the importance of performance versus technique or, you know, anything. It's like, no, 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 no. And he would, you know, really uh, fight for what he thought was the best performance of something versus technically the best sounding something. And when I, the first time that came up and, and he launched into this, like, amazing... Uh, uh, five minute thing, saying, uh, you, uh, you, throwing all these songs up on his on his uh, on the speakers of the Rolling Stones or whoever. All these songs that had these anecdotes of, well, okay, hear that. That's a little out of tune, but you know that was the best performance. And hear that. That's a little sort of so and so didn't play it, and they're behind the beat or da 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 da. And he'd have all of these examples of great songs that we all know and love that I'm just not able to retrieve in my brain right now, but that it was the importance of the performance, and that's what he was after. So it was, Mary Chapin, you will live with this. Yeah. That you, yeah. I can't live yeah. with this. Relax. I, I will yeah. live with this. And, and I did. And, and I so did. you have. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Good for us. You're here this morning. <laughs> We'd still be working otherwise. Uh, back when you did, I, we were talking about one of my favorite interviews with you was back when Party Dolls and Other Favorites came out. Mm-hmm. And I remember from that interview, something you said that stuck with me through the years. You said, it is a shame, and I'm paraphrasing, mm-hmm. that an artist's place or the success by which we judge people is based on some spot on a chart somewhere and that when you're not on the charts anymore which you certainly once were in mm-hmm, country mm-hmm, music mm-hmm. people think you've just disappeared they all do. together they and, do. and has social media changed that do you think and is that one of the biggest changes you've uh, seen in your career well i think social media artists? is a tremendous tool mm-hmm. I, th- I think it's a great thing to be able to uh, you know, speak to the world. Uh, but even with that and the reach of it, people do, they just kind of, I think they zone, they have these, they have these delivery systems, whether it's television, radio, uh, the internet, whatever it may be, that if you don't appear on their screen, uh, they think that you, stop doing it or whatever. yeah it's like whatever happened to mary chapin carpenter and it's like wait a minute i've been working my butt off for years and years and i've been to australia and the uk and all across the u.s and i never stopped and it's just the way they think you know again it's just a it's very innocent i think but it's just they think if you're not on their screen then you 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 must have gone underground or something well you recently burst onto their screen when you were inducted into the songwriters hall of fame that's been a couple of years ago what comes to mind when i say that what 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 do you feel what do you want to share well i just want to start crying basically it was just that that night was unforgettable to me uh i've never felt so honored in my life to be around so many people who i respect look up to um to have don schlitz uh induct me to have trisha yearwood sing one of my songs to be greeted with 
by so many people. You know, it's I don't live in Nashville, but I've always been made to feel a part of this community in a way that I don't feel about anywhere else in the world. And and it really isn't about where you are on the charts. It's about mm. who you are as a person yeah. and uh that that's why it means so much. The class of eighty nine is a very famous class which you were a part in country music. Isn't that funny? Would you yeah. recount that? Well, you know, uh it's you know I don't know oh gosh well it I I was signed to what was then CBS Records in 1987 and um, I think my first record came out in 1988. Charlie's going to have to check this this for me. 87. I think. 80, yeah, it was thank 87. You. Okay, yeah, I knew so, I was yeah. wrong. Thank yeah. you, Eddie. Thank you, Eddie. <laughs> Charlie, Eddie. But um, there's there's going to be a point where that's not going to be a compliment anymore. <laughs> 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 no, I'm just <laughs> so so uh, you know, my first record came out, but but I guess what what how did I get into the class of '89? I guess. But who was in the class of '89? Well, was it uh, okay? I'm, I'm, was it Travis Tritt? I'm gonna. Th- uh, I want to say Garth Brooks. Uh, I want to say uh, 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 Travis Tritt. I want to say Alan Jackson. Yep. Uh-huh. And I don't know who else to say. But just all these people in that particular class that people uh-huh. look back on that eighty nine ninety period, uh-huh. crossing into the new decade, uh-huh. where people went on to success we had not seen mm-hmm. in the history of country music. Mm-hmm. Out of that class of, right. of folks that you right. were in, and and it's really ironic that people still remember that particular class, and it's for obvious reasons, yeah. uh, destined for the Hall of Fame for some. Some are already in there. In the case of Garth Brooks, mm-hmm. and um, that you were here when all that was going on. Yeah. We talked about how exciting Nashville is now, and it's yeah. the it city. We've got a prime time drama, yeah, ABC yeah, yeah. TV's yeah. Nashville, which yeah. is just bringing people here in droves. People yeah. are coming to visit, and then they say, "You know what? We're going back home, packing up, moving to Nashville." Don't know what we're going to do when we get there, but we're going to move to Nashville because it's mm-hmm. there's something magic going on there, and it was kind of that way in in eighty nine and ninety in the industry. It seems right. to me uh-huh. as you look back. Uh-huh. Well, I just you know I I I just look back on those days, and I'm you know just kind of astounded by it. It, it, it there were opportunities and things happened that I never would have imagined in my you know wildest dreams that would have happened. You know so. Just to be able to make a living playing music, it's just, it's the best. It's great. What's the connection with Don Schlitz? What do you guys have that you don't have with other co-writers? Uh, well, I think he's just inc- incredibly talented. He's incredibly smart. He's incredibly fast and has an, an amazing sense of humor. Mm-hmm. He takes in everything. He's not cowed by anything he's his intellect is as sharp as it can be he's he's just all of those things and he's just a great great songwriter he's a great songwriter how i got lucky enough to to hang out with him and write songs i'll never know but he 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 wanted to do it and it took me some i had to be persuaded because i was really intimidated by the idea of sitting down with someone i had never co-written with anyone i I saw it as this solitary task, mm-hmm. you know, just looking at my pad and my paper. And and I learned so much from him that I took back with me into my own songwriting. But certainly in the in the um context of co writing, things like um well, first of all, he's very adamant about having perfect rhymes, you know, again and bin would not work for him um but but when you when you work with someone he i would like i'd be you know hunched over my pad and sort of muttering to myself and he'd say no 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 no. say it out loud you have to share everything with me and i I mean for me it was i was gibberish kind of thing but he wanted to hear all of it and that's how that's how he connects with someone and it was great Mary Chapin Carpenter, if you just joined us, The Things That We Are Made Of is the brand new music available wherever you buy or download music right now. I moved to Nashville in late 1990, and that was really my introduction to your music because I was a few years behind. But my parents were massive country music fans. They grew up in Cumberland, Rhode Island, about six miles from Brown in Providence. 
And uh, when there was nothing good on television, uh, my dad would tape everything. So they would watch old TNN shows, old award shows. So I was home visiting them one time, and, and they were watching the 1990 CMA Awards. And my dad suddenly goes, oh, you're going to love this part. She gets some good here. Watch this. Listen, and that, of course, was the opening oh, act. Gosh. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Amazing. Could you take me back to that night, though? Because in mm-hmm. hindsight now, mm-hmm. it's witty, it's charming, but I think you lose – for lack of a better word, in part of my language, but you lose the ballsiness of doing that on the CMA Awards. I can't imagine what that night was like. Well, you know, you know that that song was a, a, a novelty song uh-huh. that I wrote, uh, and it was, you know, had more edge and a little nastier, a little bit more pointed in its original version. And one night, Irving Waugh, the, the great. Irving. Irving, well, Irving, who was Lad. the longtime producer of the CMAs, he came to see our show at the at the Birchmere, and I played that song that night. I'd just written it as a joke. It was just a joke, truly. And then months later, I get this phone call saying, we want you to come sing sing it on the CMAs, and I was absolutely, no, I can't, I can't because it's nasty and edgy, and I couldn't do that, and I couldn't imagine them I couldn't imagine how you could clean it up enough to make it work. And then why would you want it anyway, you know? But they were very persuasive. And I think I mentioned this to you the other day. I think the worst, the most egregious element of of it for me after the fact was that I had to sing to a track. You know, it's like I felt yeah. kind of like a goofball doing that. But, uh, but that's anyway. your homework assignment on the web today, speaking of social media. No, don't go if you, there. If you don't. don't. <laughs> if you don't know it. If you don't know it, no. you need to know it. Mary Chapin Carpenter. you bad hairdo. Opening act. Yeah. You're on 650 AM WSM. What I love about the things that we are made of, and I'm one who loves scenery and music and mm. traveling and mm. little dusty towns, and you write about them. Uh, the vast unseen, the great unknown, the map of a heart is all that we own. We heard that earlier, map of my heart. But then you write, on the way back home, I'll stop a while, ease this truck onto the shoulder of the road. It's a long straight line that goes for miles and miles, and it's as empty as a Great Plains Conoco. I don't know where you were when you wrote that, but I've been to that place. I was driving from Montana to Denver, and that's one long, long stretch of of highway and and, the song uh, is called Livingstone yes mm-hmm. yeah, it's on this new work we'll come back finish up with Mary Chapin Carpenter right after this we've talked much about her music new music Mary Chapin Carpenter the things that we are made of this hour and a podcast there will be audio of this there will be video of this the whole world is playing to the camera including us this morning <laughs> and before Mary Chapin Carpenter gets away uh, let's turn from the music to fashion for just a moment I love the hat you were wearing in the artwork. There's a oh, there's, there's a, a hat, a the, photo of you, kind oh, of yeah, a profile yeah. of you walking in a field. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. And are, are you a, are you a hat chick? And we didn't know it all this time. Um, I, that you know the, the 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 lovely stylist that I work with, she brought that beautiful hat, which I kept. Um, I'm a baseball cap kind of gal uh-huh. on a regular basis. Just you know, so you put it back walk, in ponytail. Sure, mm-hmm. walking around looking like a schlub. It's my favorite way of being. <laughs> That'll be the next album title, by the way. Walking around looking like a schlub. It's that's my happy place. <laughs> yeah. Ours is when you come to see us, and it's been too long. Thanks Thank for you. being here. This oh, morning. thanks for having me, Bill. And uh, you write th- this, of course, from the song "Middle Ages." The Middle Ages on your album seventeen makes us brave and so full of nerve. Thirty five makes us pause, but we're unturred. Never say die. And so we push on. Yes, we do. Push on, Mary Chapin. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thanks. Hi, this is Bill Cody from 650 AM WSM. Thank you for watching our YouTube channel. If you like what you've seen, click the button below.